Hi, I'm Tron. And I'm Kim. Welcome, Welcome to, to Rejoice Ascension Network Podcast. Podcast, where we interview anointed men and women in the body of Christ. Grab your pen, grab your paper, get ready to receive. Welcome to Rejoice Essential Network Podcast. This is your host, Kimberly. My co-host Tron is not here today, but I do have a special guest who is one of my co-authors of our book collaboration of I Almost Died. Her name is Michelle. How are you doing, woman of God? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you today? Good. So when I read your testimonies, I was amazed and I stopped as I was reading it and I was praising God. I was like, wow, no way. Like, you don't even look like you've been through that. Like, seriously. (laughs) It's like, oh, my gosh. Like, you know, you guys that's listening, you have to get this book and you have to read Michelle's testimony. Like, so tell us a little bit about your ministry before we even go there. Or tell us a little bit about you before we go there. Okay. Um, So I am a single mom of three beautiful children. I have two grown sons and a little girl who's seven. Um, I currently work for a nonprofit. Um, I'm working on a literacy program to assist children um, in adverse communities to be on grade level reading by second grade. I also work with the homeless popula- population um, and women of domestic violence and uh, women and children um, who are experiencing food scarcity. Um, just kind of assist them. I also do a little bit of grant writing and fundraising committee. Okay, good. So y'all heard that. So she's going to give her information out at the end so you may sure... You connect with her, okay? You make sure you connect if you want, like, grant writing and all her services. So, Woman of God, we know that this book right now, this book is going to be, like, a right now word for what's going on with this pandemic. There's death everywhere. Like, I don't know about you, but when I look down on Facebook or my social media, I see people dying, like, every single day. Yes, yes. Uh, Never tomorrow. You never know when it's going to be your last time and just... You know, we're so grateful every day that God gives us the grace and mercy to to open our eyes and to experience a new day of life with him. Yes, yes. And it seems like people take their lives for granted. Uh, They don't value life. And one of the things that I I love uh, about your story and your your journey um, is that you overcame. Like, you are a walking testimony. Like, you should have been dead. Like, um... Briefly, tell us about that when you uh, went to the hospital uh, and the doctor looked at you and he's like, wow. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and those two stories that I shared are just two of many that God has, has graced me and, and saved me uh, from death. And I'm so grateful to him. But I, um, I remember that day, like yesterday, um, I had just gotten out of surgery. I'd had problems for a couple of years with veins and circulation and, and I had surgery and I was laying in the bed and, and I just remember this excruciating pain and it kept getting worse and worse and I wanted to to go to sleep but I was scared um, and I called my sister and, and she said you know I guess best to the hospital just in case let's just go check it out um, and I got to the hospital and I figured you know if there was something serious you know they'll take me back right away yeah. and we were hours just waiting and waiting and waiting and the pain got so worse to the point where I couldn't walk. Um, I had a hard time breathing and just so many things started you know, coming across my mind wondering, you know, is this the end? Is, you know, what's happening? Um, and I just remember once the doctor came in and diagnosed me and said, you know, we don't diagnose patients with Cots. We're usually telling the family who is making funeral arrangements. Wow. So, yeah, by the time they diagnosed me, um, the, the blood clot in my leg had traveled to my lungs, and I had four blood clots on each chamber of my lungs, which wow. they call a PE, which is a pulmonary embolism. Um, and I was not able to walk at all at this point. I couldn't walk at all. 
Um, I was bedridden in the hospital for eight days. Um, I had to have physical therapy. I had to be on blood thinners. I had to actually have um, my best friend and my sister would come. They would take turns and they would come and wash me up and work with me. And I was also in the middle of a final for school. So I was completing my work while in the hospital bed. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. And like you, like many others, like at that time, I know you're a different woman now. But you just kind of just like, whatever, I'm still going to live my life. And you didn't, you didn't rest. You, didn't, you did not rest. And you were still on your feet. And I was like, I wow. Did, <laughs> yeah, I didn't rest at all. I was constantly doing, constantly seeking um, men's approval, thinking, okay, if I do a little more little harder, if I take more classes, if I earn some more money. And I just kept doing it to the point where I was wearing myself down. But I didn't realize that it was taking me out of here. Yeah. And then you were smoking. You know you weren't supposed to be smoking. This, you right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was smoking. I was on birth control. And you're not supposed to mix the two. And then, you know, along with um, the circulation problems, you know, I didn't care. I barely even ate. I worked so much. I, wow. I think uh, my my diet consisted of cigarettes and Pepsi, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow, that's uh, that's that's why I'm so amazed at your testimony, um, because I know many people that have you know uh, smoked and when they was on birth control and uh, I I read a story with this woman. She was young, I think she was in her thirties, and she mm-hmm. had like the pulmonary uh, embolisms that she was talking about in her lungs on the airplane, and she died on the airplane. I was like, what? Um, yeah. So I was I was shocked. Like, wow, God, you really have like a something great in store for Michelle. Mhm. I was 32 when that happened. Wow. I was 32. Jesus, yep. Jesus, Jesus. So how important is is it to pay attention to the signs like in our bodies, like if our body is telling us something? You know, a lot of times I, I in talking to people and even in in my own experience, we hear the word of God people say things from scripture and we just kind of blow it off like yeah. oh that's how they used to do in the old testament but the bible says the warning comes before destruction so when you you getting that red flag when the holy spirit is speaking to you on the inside he's trying to warn you before the last warning comes it's so important to to live by and feed off of the word of god and and just literally listen take that time to be still first thing in the morning and throughout the day and at night and it's so important to pray and ask God, you know, why am I feeling this about a person or a thing or a decision that you've already made or you're about to make? It's so important to seek Him because when you're going along and you're doing your own thing, you're self-destructing, and a lot of times you don't even know it. Again, the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge, but He gave us the knowledge of His Word. So we're taking that for granted in each day that we are not spending with him and not spending in his word or living by his word. We take it for granted. It's there. We have the resource and the tool. We're just not using it. Yes. And that's good advice. So you also wrote, uh, different ways to die. And I was amazed. Like, wow, she just had a list. So can you give us some, um, different ways? Cause people just take it for granted. Like just life yeah. period, you know, life period. So uh, a lot of people think, you know, dying is just, you know, having a heart attack or, you know, your heart stopped beating or, or brain damage, but they forget or they're not paying attention to or are unaware of. You can be walking and your heart beating and your brain functioning and still be dead in the spirit. Wow. You can be a walking, walking, functioning dead man walking, literally. You know, just because your heart is pumping and you're living physically does not mean you're living. Because truly living is living in the will of God and doing things that please him and doing things his way. It's not necessarily the world's way. Um, And I think we get so caught up in, you know, in work schedules and being busy and, you know, I got to make sure I get done what I need to at home and cooking and cleaning and taking care of the kids. And, you know, can I take another class at school if I just made more money? But that's not necessarily living. It's not truly living. Yes, absolutely. 
So when you had like these near-death encounters, what was going through your mind? How were you feeling? To be honest with you, back then, judgment, fear, um, confusion, uncertainty, um, uncertainty for my children who was going to care for them. Yeah. Um, you know, ha- had I, questioning myself, had I done as a thing God wanted me to do? Did I live a purpose life? Did I finish my work? Did I even start it? Yes. Yes. And you know what? There's so much fear, like, running around here, right? Like, in this pandemic, everywhere I turn is fear, like, people, uh, the toilet paper shortage, the hand sanitizer shortage, Mm -hmm. uh, people panicking. What is your advice on fear about that? Pray, pray, and pray. The Bible continues to remind us the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So the minute that that fear comes, you know. If you're in your word and you're praying, you have that connection with God, you know that's not God. So you have to uproot that thing. And you don't receive it. And and a lot of times, people, and I didn't even realize back then when I was having my blood clots, you know, I didn't pay as much attention to, you know, my dreams and things like that. A lot of times we'll dream things and we'll wake up and we'll just brush it off, not realizing that we come into covenant with those things. Whether we we agree to it verbally or we just ignore it. If you're ignoring it, by default, we come into agreement with it. So it's so important to pray and to remember to recognize what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and when the enemy is trying to come and bring fear. Why is he trying to come and bring fear? Yes. Is there a certain way we should pray? Like if we have some kind of dreams uh, from the enemy, like how should we pray that away? Um, I always, when I get up in the morning, I talk to God about my prayer, about my dreams, and I say, God, you know, if this is a dream from you, if you're warning me about something, um, you know, show me, give me direction, show me a sign, um, whether it's in your word or someone else, um, and if it is of you, I receive it. But God, if it is not of you, I do not receive it. Yeah. I uproot it. I renounce it. I nullify it in the name of Jesus. And I'll go through scripture and I'll put the word on it because I know that it is his anointing that destroys yokes and I am not able to fight the spirit with my flesh. So I always remember to invite him in and I always remember at the end of my prayer to say, God, not my will, but your will be done. Amen. So I want you to briefly pray for the listeners that are going through fear, dealing with like just um, feeling like, is over for them. They had like so many concerns on their minds about what's going on. Could you pray for our listeners? Absolutely. Sure. Father God, we come before you acknowledging you as our God. You said, God, acknowledge me in all thy ways and I will direct your path. So Father, into the lives of the listeners on today, God, we cover their minds with your blood and with your peace, oh God. We cover their spirits with your peace at this time. We nullify and render void any spirits of fear, oh God. Because, Father God, we acknowledge and we thank you, God, that you have given us the spirit of peace. And you give us power, love, and sound mind. Father God, we thank you for your mercies every day, God. We thank you, God. We plead the blood of Jesus over the listeners on this podcast that you, Father God, that your blood, Jesus, would remove the deceptive scales of the evil ones from the eyes. And, Father God, that they would be able to tune into your voice, O oh God, and a stranger's voice they shall not follow. We ask you, God, to open the eyes of the listeners, O oh God, that they would hear your voice and speak your direction and your purpose for their life, O oh God, and that they would listen to the warnings, O oh God, and they would, they would be in tune with your spirit, O oh God. We cover the listeners and their households, O oh God, with the blood of Jesus. We lose peace over their homes and over their lives. We thank you, God, that you are the giver of all things. We thank you, O oh God, that your children are never forsaken, God. We thank you, God, that you're an on-time God a merciful God, and we just acknowledge you, God, and we give you glory and honor, and we just worship you, oh God. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, amen. I felt that. Amen. Amen. (laughs) So how can our listeners connect with you? Um, They can connect with me through email. It's L-O-A, T as in Tom, F as in Frank, A as in Apple, M as in Mary, at verizon.net. 
um, or they can connect with me on my Facebook page, Michelle Lopez. Amen, amen. So you guys, you heard her testimony, well, a, a brief, briefly, you heard her testimony, but you guys, you have to get the book, all right, because you are going to be blessed. This meeting right here, this interview blessed me, and I know it's going to bless you guys. So you guys, make sure you connect with Michelle and just grab hold of her services and be a blessing unto her. So until next time, we'll see you in the next podcast. And remember, get the book, I Almost Died.